So what I have is the predict wind um, forecast for wave height right now. And Sunday, you can see we've got two and a half footers, not too bad. That's at uh, th three o'clock, still two foot. This is kind of dropping down as the evening goes. There's like a new midnight and during the night, I'm letting it go through Monday. And you can see it's raising up to two and a half, three feet again. No, nope, just two and a half on Monday. And then uh, Tuesday is going to be great. So I'm just letting this run all the way across so it actually downloads. I thought it Yeah, did. so that this whole side is all waves. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you can see on Tuesday there's not much going on until later in the afternoon. Nothing, nothing, nothing. It's going to be interesting. So we're going to go over to this other forecast, which is waves, and it's starting on Wednesday. And I'm going to go in a little closer and show you so this looks like this is all the wind speed moving <clears throat> yeah four knots and this is uh la paz this is where we are right now this is where we're heading these are options for us to go to along here and this is isla san francisco and san jose and it's getting a little tricky as to whether or not we're going to be able to go up there no problem going it's coming back so coming we... back because uh the winds right now are from the north yeah no they're yeah. fine and so, so what, what, if it was this conditions for coming back would it be an issue no not no. at all yeah we'd, not, we'd have a light breeze and a nice fun sail that's six o'clock on wednesday right so that's tonight okay so looking at uh 2100 2200 2400 you can see we're getting a slight southerly okay not a problem it's very light and let's go ahead and put down a marker so we can actually are you see. always traveling here or do you ever use the winds see it's southerly here and then it's northerly here mm -hmm. so yeah. could you bust out there if you wanted to use the winds to your favor there's a lot of miles out there to get there so um so there's like to give you a sample an example um i just want to get this higher so it's not on the island um to get from here to here is like 28 miles this is like 45 miles 50 miles Okay, so, darn, uh, sunshine. I'm going to just let it roll for a second. Whoops. Let it rolling. We're going into Thursday. Obviously, this is going to be great fishing. Damn. Just saw it. You could see the color change right there. Wait a minute. What is this thing? Get out of here. Okay, I'm going to go back to, where were we? Uh, Wednesday. I'll just go there. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum. We're... Wednesday, 8 o'clock in the morning, Thursday, I mean, Thursday all day long, looking really nice. You know, where did my thing go? Oh, here it is. Yeah, that's what I was seeing. Yeah, that's 12 knots, no big deal. So I was thinking, you know, if we want on um, Thursday or Friday, we could zip up into this. So my, my plan right now is because we're going to have good weather today and nice weather tomorrow, we should stay around Balandra and maybe go to Espiritu Santos. But I'll, I'll How's look. later in the week looking like I'm Saturday? There. Okay, so here's here's if we stay through the next day. Friday, we're at five in the morning, basically no wind, but we got a little norther going, so there'll be a little swell. Friday the 11th at 11.56, nothing. We can go north if we want from there to Espiritu. And that's at six o'clock. So four, six o'clock is all nice, no problem. This Look is at all that night just long. die out. Yeah, that's all night long. And you know, for if you want to do some night fishing and stuff, this would be a cool place to, you know, do some of that. And then moving on through Saturday, we're going to see a building of the wind. It's nice right now at, at nine o'clock in the morning. So if we were positioned up here on Saturday, we could still go up there on Saturday the twelfth. And here's the, you know, now you start to see it's going to get hard to get there. Um, now it's going 15 and pretty harsh. And that's only at 4 o'clock. So let me back up just a little bit. So it seems to me that if we want to mm -hmm, go to San Francisco, the day before might be the time to go. So Friday might be the time to go. Um, 15 knots is usually good sailing, you know, so, but it's work and lots of splashing and stuff like that. And it's okay. Then Sunday, 
you see it's starting to build at five o'clock in the morning and 17 18 knots on sunday the 13th mm -hmm. and then the 15th this is at night sunday night you know um kind of nice could even do a night run and then now we're on the 14th and from the north to go home that would probably be okay to go home nice 15 knots to go home and then here's a cool one on the 15th we're getting a, a light southerly um, nice actually a little light but by 12 o'clock it comes it starts filling in it's starting to look pretty good you can do a pretty good analysis of that whole system as we kind of look at and it. then there's i'm flying out that day and then you're flying out on yeah the 16. so we got to get in by the 15th so anyway just a general overview if we did wednesday in Belandra, thursday um we could either stay in Belandra or go up to espiritu santo um well, let me do this different you know, from a 30,000 foot view if we go up to San Francisco we might have a rough ride on the way home and we'll be stuck there for a couple of days so looking at our chart every morning or every night before you go to sleep you know you see where the boat is give yourself like a way out in between it, everything where you know you're going to be safe so this if you take this heading right there uh, you can see it's 0.36 miles at a course of 211 degrees. So it could be dark as shit. It could be all kind of stuff going on. And you just put 210 degrees on this compass. You'll get me out of here safe. And after you get to 210 degrees on here, you push the autopilot because we're going to probably be busy. And then check your course over the ground over here and see that it's really kind of close to 210. Right. If not, you make a couple adjustments to the autopilot. After the boat's going out at 210, you know you can take us out of here safely. Right? That's called your exit bearing. You always have one at night. Now for today, we're going to go out on this and see where we're going. And I wish I would take all these tracks off. Uh, I should have done that before we did this. But anyway, I want you to give us a course out of here and then give us a course to here and there. But you don't have to give me this course today but well i'll do it real quick i could go out here and say that's safe but i don't need to go out quite that far i could go there so after 210 i can switch around to 245 i could make it to Belandra by going 330 degrees and then we go in so that's all you have to do to do it okay and that'll get you familiar with the courses and stuff but what we are going to do is we're going to kind of troll and uh, we'll go past the island here. Yep. There's been some mahi caught here, so we'll go past there for fun. And now uh, we'll get, in, get our butts into Valandra. And of course, then you can see here's the Spiritu Santo, so where we were talking about and getting in here. And then east of San Francisco is another 28 miles up there. Clear the cursor, brings us down, you can roll us back in. And when you get out of here today, just make sure that you watch your depth all the time. And you're gonna watch that you're not driving on uh, stuff that's a little shallow. Um, yeah, get us out of here at this bearing, 210 to 213. Okay. Got it. Yep, I see that right there. Okay, good. Look at all the fish under our boat. All right, bro. Let's start looking over the boat. I think it's on this side. Uh, no, I'm wrong. Put the halyard on. There you go. On that first one. This one? Looking for that pin has to fit. All right, so we open up the locker. And I got a little wire on here that 
here. A little clip over to there to keep it from slapping down in the head. Propane tank out. And then, mm -hmm. Get the things out. Those guys. Tighten up the clutch on the windlass. This? Yeah. That, that's How good tight? enough. That's good enough. Doesn't have to be real tight. Oh, really? I, I already did a turn at all. Yeah, that's fine. I, okay. saw, I felt that you could feel it. So now uh, what we want to do is, is I, I do it a lot of times standing up at first. And uh, what I want to do is bring that cleat that's holding the, holding yeah, the bridle. The... You want to bring it up, but don't let it hit the thing. The uh, anchor roll. Don't let it hit the anchor roll. I thought it was right here in the car. Just keep going until you see it. Okay. Don't overload the windshield. Am I overloading the windshield going too fast? No, you got. That's it. You're doing it right. You're lifting a little bit of chain and letting the chain start to pull the boat forward rather than letting the windlass pull the boat forward. Gotcha. Okay. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go, take it off. But drop the metal right in front of the light. It'll stay there. Oh, okay. It's kind of handy little spot just for Just like it. that? Yeah. So now, I'm just going to go ahead and, and bring in a little bit more line. I want you to watch the chain in the catenary. Oh, also you got to kick the castle down. So go ahead and knock that castle, spread the chain around. Down here? Yeah. Oh, this is the, ca the chain's castling. Yeah. And you don't want to put it on top of itself. That's it. And I'll bring in a little bit more. Watch what happens. And I do a lot of this actually on my knees because it's just so So see, I'm picking up the cantonary. Now the, now the boat started to load, so I'll just leave it here. Okay? and let the boat start to move forward. And let the boat start to move forward. Okay, and knock down the castle. We're gonna let it sit here now for a little bit. And we'll go work on the sail, okay? All right. But knock the castle down so it's ready for you. Under normal circumstances, it's good practice to put the propane tank back in so that it's not left unattended on deck to fall in the water. Easy to take it back out of there, hard to get it out of the water. <laughs> then just leave it, because we're gonna have to finish taking it all in. So we, this is where we check all our lines. The jib sheets are strung, there's no halyards in a bad way. So it looks like we're ready to rock and roll. So I wanna explain a couple things here. Um, those are for furling, as we talked about. That line that's going up to take care of the furling there, that's called the topping lift. In this case, it doubles as a topping lift and the Dutchman line. But we really don't need a topping lift on this particular boat because we have a thing called the boom bang. The boom bang can control how high or low the boom is, and it'll stay there without having the support of the topping lift. Okay, so topping lift's kind of redundant. This line controls how far the sail is pulled out in the back, how tight the foot is. This line here is a reefing line, and that's the main halyard. Those are the only lines that are going to be on the front of the sail. The foot tightener, the reef line, because it's a single line reefing, and the main halyard, right? The boom bang is controlled by that yellow rope in the back, and it's pretty well set for what we're going to do today. This is called the main sheet, and you can see the main sheet lets the sail go out and lets the sail go to the other side. So if you were tacking, you'd be here and you'd go, whoa, we tacked to the other side. But generally, we don't like to let the sail run unattended and slam over to the other side. The heavier the wind, the more under control you are. 
So if you're going to tack, you bring it a little bit more to the center by pulling in the main sheet, make your tack, and then let it out as opposed to let it go bang all the way across. This is the main thing that you use to let the sail out further and out further and out further. Why do you let a sail go in or out? Well, when you're going close to the wind, you want the front edge of the sail to point really close into the wind. And as the wind moves around to the side of the boat, you want the front edge of the sail to point into the wind. As it moves toward the back, you want the front edge of the sail to point into the wind. So you always make the front edge of the sail point toward the wind. And that's all there is to it. After that, there's some, you know, controls that you do, like letting the front of the sail luff a little bit by pulling by letting the sail out, letting the main sheet out until it luffs. Then you pull it a slight bit back in and it's usually pretty properly trimmed at that point, assuming that the topping lift and boom vane have the back of the sail where you want it, which for upwind is tight and downwind you let it up so that you can make it more of a catcher's mitt. Imagine like uh, putting your hat out into the wind, it's gonna catch a lot of wind. That's the sail shape you want downwind and upwind when you want a knife edge. So you only have that control. You know the front controls, three lines. You almost never tighten the foot. The vang, we don't adjust very much. So the halyard is all we're using there. I'll simplify it, you don't have much to do. Yeah. The topping lift is, should be pretty well set, so you don't have to do much there. This is gonna be the thing you use all the time, main sheet, and then there's a traveler. That's this thing. It slides back and forth. I've noticed on this boat <clears throat> that because the controls for the main sheet are in the middle as opposed to polar bear where the end of the boom, I have a really hard time tightening the, the sail as tight as I want it. So I just get it as tight as I can, which is usually about here. And then I use the traveler to bring it over for going upwind, say on a port tack and on a, other, on a starboard tack, I'd bring it here in light wind and uh, it's past the center line. On strong winds, you would leave it on a starboard tack about like that, port tack about like that, and you can tack back and forth in strong winds without having to touch it. So let's go ahead and play with these controls and stuff. As I wanted to show you too, if you're lifting the sail at anchor, pretending we didn't have a motor, because I love anchoring under sail, and sailing into an anchor under sail. We're not going to practice that today. You, you want the main sheet all the way out so that we don't get sideways and catch a gust of wind and drives us forward onto the shallow water in front of us. If we were pointing toward harder water, I wouldn't care. So we're just going to go in now and loosen the main sheet so that the main can do whatever the hell it wants. So this is where you got to start following the lines we talked about. This is a reef line. This is a jib halyard. You're not going to use it. This is the traveler for the port side. And this is the main sheet. You can control the main sheet from any side you want. I prefer to uh, control it on the right hand side. So let's go to there, to the starboard side. Oops. Yeah, so and let's clean up. Sheet. Get out of here. It's in our way. Throw it all downstairs. We can deal with it later. Okay, yeah, so you got the main halyard, and this is the topping lift. You won't use it, and here's the vane. But you have your main sheet, yep, that's and you got your seen. traveler. So let the main all out. Just let it out. Just make sure it's loose, and then I go like this. Just to make sure she's gonna go, okay? Because I don't want her to get in, go anywhere on us while we're working. But now she's loose, you gotta watch your head. That's the reason they call it boom. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and raise the main. And you can do the whole thing from here. Or if you got crew, somebody could jump it. But why don't you go ahead and single hand it? That's it. Now should I be pulling on top of that winch right there? Nope, not yet. You can pull as much as you can. But I would have closed the clutch so that you can let go. Watch, I'll show you. The clutch lets the line come to you, but not go back. There you go. There you go. You can get it all the way up by yourself. Great. You 
got it. Now you might put it around the winch and just give it a little tight. Two turns? Yeah, and then grab your winch handle and give it a little squeak. This is kind of hard when you're alone because you can't really see it very well, so you have to just kind of keep an eye on it. Because you can go too far? Yeah. So that's good. As soon as you feel a little pressure, you got it. I can hear it squeaking, so I know you got it. Okay. So I'll show you a little something here before you clean up the rope. Look at the luff, luff of the sail. The luff line is the front of the sail. That's what they call the luff, because it luffs. Okay? The luff line is baggy down here on the bottom. And that's because the sail shape is cut for these big battens. And it's kind of older sail, maybe. So you see that second hole up? That's a yeah. Cunningham hole. We need to rig a Cunningham to pull that baggy wrinkle out. But we're not going to mess with it today. So here comes the sail. That's okay. So that's the luff, and this is the foot. Makes sense, right? That side luffs, and this is the foot. Okay. The head of the sail is at the top. The bottom of the sail is where you tack it down. And the back of the sail is called the cleat. Actually, it's got something else I can't remember. And the trailing edge of the sail is um, the leech. Leech. And I have no idea where leech came from, <laughs> but that's where it is. All right, so we have the main set. Clean up your line. We're not going to use that main halyard anymore, so I'd take it off of the winch and put it somewhere out of the way. And I'll show you a little trick with that if you want. You can hold this. And, um, one of the things I like to do is get it real even by just going like this. Real fast, everything comes out the same. Really handy when you have a winch handy to be able to do that. And then uh, we have the traveler sheet here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the main in here to keep it out of the way. I want it nice because when I get ready to drop it, sometimes I drop it and I need it dropped really fast. So we're good with the Traveler. It's tangled up a little bit with that. Okay, and the main sheet's loose. Good, 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 good. We're uh, ready to start hauling the anchor and getting out of here. Sweet. We're just running the engine. We wouldn't have to if we had a little bit of breeze we could get out of here under sail how would you do that i'll show you you take the main and you push it so the wind is blowing on the back side of it and it'll drive the boat backwards and over that way if you bring it to the other side it'll drive the boat backwards oh. and over there it's called back winding the main when you drop the sail under anchor and you don't want to run your engine you back wind the main to drive the boat backwards to set the sail in the wind. It's the same as the motor. Nice. Puts power. Yeah. Okie dokie. I want you to bring up that uh, chain and stuff now. Oh, we got to get rid of that propane tank again. I like the way you're looking things over before you start. Go ahead and lift it right on I up. can bring it all the way up. Lift it up until you start seeing the cantonary lift. Lift, just hold it down. Go ahead. Let's stop there. You can see how the chain I is just getting... Saw it, yeah, okay, this up. is a good opportunity to get rid of your castle. And don't throw it over itself. Kind of lay it down. Yeah, so here it is over here, so I'm going to throw it over here. Yeah, and just the less that you put it on top of itself, the better it'll be. Hey, take a look at the main sail. See, it's in the wind. A lot of wind, but it's not doing anything. It's got no power because we have the main sheet loose. That means our main can just dig around and do anything. It's, you know, unless we got downwind, but that ain't gonna happen. So what you're doing now is you're kind of waiting for the chain, the boat get to get over the chain, which it is. So go ahead and you're gonna be pulling on it now. So we're not gonna pull too, too hard. Go ahead. And now I'm gonna stop you. If I had somebody at the helm right now, I would go, 
come forward a little bit, go over here. Uh, and guide him over the top. And, and I'd I... say stop. And I'd guide him over the top. And I want to show you, you don't need to do that. You can do it right here. Yeah, like we're this. over the top of it right now. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> See if that castle gets up into the bottom of the windlass, it could get up. I'm starting to see an anchor. I so see the anchor. Look at what's happening. The boat's blowing off. Yeah, this is this. Hey, 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 right there. You got to put your foot here sideways so that she doesn't jump out of the one foot here to run the thing and this one just stays there it doesn't do anything it's just there to uh, help us make sure that it doesn't jump out of the collar that are the anchor roll oh i see you yeah yeah and you don't want to get your foot traveling with it then the next thing you do is pull this down there, dump them down here and bring them through the channel so that we can drive away safely. And then I put this guy on so that in case there's going to be a problem, we can put that back in. Okay. The middle of it. Okay, the auto red. Okay, great. I just need to grab this spot. Okay, thank you. Now hold it for a second because we got a little bit of a problem, and that's that we have too much there you go pull some pull pull okay that's good all right we just had too much line go in that direction all right get the get the front of your sail pointed into the wind front of the sail point so i'm gonna i'm gonna turn off the autopilot first no not no battle against the you're still working so go ahead and release the, the uh, dinghy line. And you just left your first anchors on your sail, on your first main sail set. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Learn it from the master. Learn it from the master. Thank you, Dave. All right. So get us on a course of 210, which was the indicated course that you wanted out of here, right? Yeah. Make it okay. 210. Take the autopilot off? Yeah, take the autopilot off. So mm -hmm. I just hit it again? Yep. No, you hit standby. There. You see it has S here. Okay. Now turn this to 210. So it says you're on 210. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Okay, well, yeah, yeah, there's a slight difference. Okay, so you can see this would take us out of here. But now I think we're safe enough so that we could go in front of that boat if you want. So just do that. So now put it on autopilot again. Because you're single-handing, I want you to look at your main back here and say, where's the wind? Am I pointing? What? Do I have the front of the sail pointed into the wind? No. Yeah, you do, kind of. Well, the wind is kind of moving. I'm, I'm looking at the wind vane to yep. judge, you, right? Yep, yep. And you can see it's moving around. It's okay, moving yeah, now, now it looks like it's there. Yeah, now, but see what's happening to the main? The front of the main is luffing. Now watch, I'm going to pull the main sheet in and watch what happens. I always use the, this side, though. Hey, I got rid of the luck. Yep. That's all I want. Now we're sailing fine. <laughs> and um, I wanted to warm the motor up and charge the batteries a little, so we'll let that happen. But we're not motoring. We're just sailing. So for a little bit, I think we should just sail with just the main. So I'll show you. I want you to take us over there now. Okay. And I'll run the main sheet. And I'm just watching the tent because you're going to drive. So I'm going to keep the sail sailing with the wind. Oh, hold on. Go on, get out of here. Okay. Something just broke. I heard that. I heard a pop. Yeah, I know what it is, too. Um, so, just go ahead and continue sailing. We'll pick up the rest of the cabin. Okay. Why 
There it is, the up close shot of the boat transporter. What do you think that middle boat is? Looks like a ferry boat or it's something. Like a, a passenger boat, but I would never stand with my head in the way of the boat. Even though it's under ropes, we just saw something snap. It'll kill you. I'm seeing with the weather vane. Does that stay there? Uh, that the scrubber, does that stay right there? No. no. That was just there to drive. 
That's not your fish holder, right? This is. Do you do you want this here? No. No. So I'm taking it out. This is my rod holder. Yeah. Yeah, I took your shirt and that scrubber out. that revel